Welcome everybody. Happy Monday. Happy Virgo season. If you uh, signed up for this class before this morning, today's class was titled Mercury Trine Pluto. Um, and I opened my computer this morning to just take some notes and oops, <laughs> the sun is entering Virgo today. There's a big change in the sky. So I, uh, yeah, definitely was stuck in Leo season, I guess. Wanted to stay fixed, not ready to change into the end of summer just yet. So feel free to say hello uh, while you join. Let us know where you're joining from, how your weekend was. Julia, good morning. Hello. Doug, what up, Jackie? The Virgo trying to get paid. Exactly. This Virgo trying to get paid. Ha ha ha. <laughs> so um, I originally had today titled Mercury Trine Pluto. So I'm just going to do a quick little spiel about what that's all about, and then we'll talk about the big thing that's happening. The sun is entering Virgo. So Mercury is the planet of thoughts, ideas, communication, everything on the mental plane, and it is trining Pluto, which is the destroyer. Trines are a harmonious aspect. So how can we look at thoughts and communication being in harmonious aspect with the destroyer? Alyssa Chow from the Blue Ridge Mountains. Welcome, Alyssa. Thanks for joining. So um, just with today with Mercury trining Pluto in the sky, what I am feeling is that there may be a breakdown in communication, but it is for a purpose that serves your highest good. So it may be shifting around some of the thoughts that you have in your own mind. It may be a breakdown in communication with another person. Um, but just because things are going a little haywire, going off track, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. Sometimes things need to break down in order to break through. So there's that little bit of Mercury trine Pluto. Now, the bigger thing that's going on today is that the sun is entering Virgo. The sun will be in Virgo until September 22nd. So we get one month of this energy. It is the last month of summer. So Virgo is a mutable earth sign. Mutable signs are those that wrap up the seasons. So Virgo is wrapping up summer um, and it prepares us to step into the next thing. So wrapping up summer, preparing for fall is the kind of energy that we'll be feeling for the next month. This can look like um, polishing your skills, maybe getting organized for fall, uh, taking down your summer decorations, bringing in some of those summer plants, preparing your home for fall. And also this is a good time to focus on things that require a lot of attention. So if there's a class that you are, like, you know, one of those self-paced classes, um, if there's one that it, you need to focus on right now, this Virgo season is a great time to do it because Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury, the planet of thoughts, communication, and ideas. So this will be a very mentally stimulating time period. A lot of crossing your T's and dotting your I's. Virgo's archetype is that of the Virgin. So bringing, view, bringing beauty into everything because of its purity, because of its innocence. The beauty lies in the details this month. So I would suggest looking at the Virgo placements that you have in your chart, in your own birth chart. You can find these online for free, just typing in free birth chart, or uh, my favorite website is astro.com. It's very easy to remember. Um, find your birth chart, look at where Virgo is, and notice if there's any planets sitting in Virgo. As the sun moves through Virgo, the sun will be highlighting and bringing energy to those planets. So on that same website, astro.com, you can also view what is called the chart of the moment if you're curious as to exactly what degree Virgo is at that time on that day. So Virgo hasn't officially moved into, or the sun hasn't officially moved into Virgo just yet, but later today we will be starting Virgo season. Kim has a Virgo moon, so you will be having that conjunct uh, next or this upcoming Saturday. 
The 27th is the new moon. That's when the sun and moon will be conjunct. However, that might not be at the same degree where your Virgo moon lies. So yeah, just keep an eye on the chart of the moment. If you're curious, you know, if you want to notice how the transiting sun is impacting your life. Wade is a Virgo rising, Julia Virgo rising, and Virgo moon. A lot of Virgo energy in here today. Julia and Kim, I'm just curious. Are you guys extremely tidy in your homes? Do you keep things very organized having that Virgo moon? Michelle has Mercury in Virgo. Love it. So let's see how that sun amplifies your thoughts and communication. Um, when I think about Virgo, I think about like perfectionism, like super detail oriented. And I do believe that I have a biased opinion about Virgo. Um, I have some family members who are Virgo sons. Uh, but like I say, with, with all of these transits, with all of these placements, nothing has to be good or bad. So just when I think of Virgo Mercury, my first thing is like, oh God, <laughs> they're probably thinking about details left and right all the time. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Wade OCD-ish. <laughs> Kim exceptionally. Yeah, Virgo, the virgin, it has to be clean. It has to be pure, um, un, un, um, contaminated with things that don't fit, things that don't belong. Very, very detail-oriented. Oh, Julia, I'm cleaning right now <laughs> listening to you. That's hilarious. Um, so I don't know if you guys can hear the crickets. I do have like a, a summer night play track, track song playing right now. Um, oh, Doug Virgo with moon in Libra. Clutter kills me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Michelle, I think I reunite with my habits that I once used to be in childhood. I think I reunite with my habits that I once used to be in childhood and happy. Let me know if that's how, um, that's what the sun brings as it passes over your mercury. I like the way that you spun that. So, um, these crickets playing, the summer night soundtrack. Uh, knowing that Virgo is our last month of summer, uh, the summer nights are like the best thing about summer, in my opinion. Um, and I also, I, I don't know about you guys, but I've been having the weirdest sleep lately, um, I am normally really good at just sleeping through the night. I'm an excellent sleeper. But for the last maybe three or four months, I'll wake up at, I don't know, anytime between one and three, and I'm just awake for like three hours, um, and I can't fall back asleep. But it happened again last night, and I made note, because I woke up at like 3.30 in the morning, and in the, the heart of summer, in the beginning of summer, you can already hear the birds chirping at that time. And this morning I was laying there and it was still pitch black and my alarm goes off at 5.15 anyway, but uh, I was just laying there and realizing like there's no birds, it's all crickets and it's just so interesting. So knowing that we're wrapping up summer, I decided to throw some crickets uh, on our soundtrack today to embrace those summer nights. Maybe we can watch Grease later. Good morning, Aisha. Michelle, um, Jennifer, yes, you're waking up in the middle of the night too. Michelle, me too. I wake up at one and sometimes can't sleep till one or two. Yeah, it's, I don't know um, if it's me, if it's the energies that are rising in the universe. Um, my One of my favorite astrologers, Pam Gregory, has been talking about being wired lately. That's how she puts it, just having like unlimited energy. And yeah, it was at the point this morning where it was like, 3.30, 3.45, and I was like, well, I might as well just get up and start my day, but I didn't want to do that, so I just laid there. Good morning, Helen. Yes, I wake up in the middle of the night more these last few days. It is the energy. Yep. Jennifer's feeling wired, too. Kayla, uh, me too. I've been in, I've started embracing it and doing my morning routines, and then a yoga nidra to get rest before the rest of my day. Thank you. I think I needed to hear that, Kayla. Just use it. If you have the energy, just use it. I wake up around that time, but uh, luckily I fall back asleep, Aisha. Yeah, I've, I've generally been able to fall back asleep, but I'm starting to feel like, am I just wasting this energy that my body wants me to have right now? 
You know what I'm saying? Maggie, good morning from Miami. Welcome, Maggie. Jennifer, my mind is overstimulated. Mercury is in Virgo right now, too. Okay, maybe I should have thought about that. But yeah, Mercury is the ruler of Virgo. And we were just talking about how Virgo is very detail-oriented. So yes, having Mercury in Virgo can cause a lot of stirring. Helen, my cat gets me up early. Aisha has been very drained. Michelle loves Kayla's idea, especially because if I go back to sleep, I feel terrible most of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, since we're starting a new zodiac period, uh, <laughs> I like to use our animal energy to um, see how we can best use this upcoming Virgo season. So today we're going to be pulling from the Illustrated Bestiary Oracle cards to see what kind of animal energies would like to help us out. Which animal energies will best serve us as we embody them? Helen Virgo, happy birthday to me. Not yet, but it's coming. Oh, you're going to be celebrating all month long. <laughs> Oh, happy belated birthday, Michelle. We just passed yours up on the 16th. Love it. Oh, Jennifer already knows card number one is for her. So uh, I will be shuffling the deck. Feel free to send your energy into my deck, asking your guides and angels for whatever messages are best served for you today. If this is your first time with me, the way that I run my readings is that I do group readings. So I will allow our guides and our energies to choose three cards from my deck. I will show them to you. Uh, so I'll show you the backs of the cards. They will all look the same. But I invite you to tune into your other physical senses. Uh, because we all have psychic abilities, we all are able to use our intuition to know what messages are for us. So I'll invite you to tune into your sense of smell, your sense of hearing, your sense of taste, sense of touch, and just notice any certain things that may come up when I show certain cards. Or like Jennifer, you may already have a number between one and three in your head, practicing your clear cognizance. Oh, I love it. There's a lot of August 16th birthdays. Helen knows number three is for her today. Happy belated birthday to all of the August 16th babies here. So let's see. Happy belated birthday to all my birthday twins. Just waiting on our last message to come through. This week I'll be back on Wednesday. Um, there's quite a lot of stuff going on in the back half of the week. Uh, and I'm going to try to cram it all into Wednesday's reading because I will not be available for the rest of the week. So be sure to join us again at 8.15 Central Time on Wednesday. Helen, lots of energy in here, Leos and Virgos. Or is it just the Leos and Virgos that are speaking up right now? <laughs> Michelle is feeling card one and three. Love it. All right, I will show you the backs of all three cards and tune into all of your physical senses and then let us know in the chat which card or more than one card will resonate with you. So here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. So let us know which cards are calling to you, and I will show them one more time. Here is the back of card number one. 
the back of card number two. And the back of card number three. Aisha's working with one, Helen definitely three, Michelle one. What else are you guys working with? Let's see if card number one has resonated with you. Throughout this next month of Virgo season, your guides are pointing you to the energy of the house finch. And they would like you to know your song. Helen, I see a hand holding a cabbage on the back of those cards. Interesting. Do you still see it? I, it's kind of dark on the camera. There's some like acorns and stuff. Nicole is working with number two. All right, card number one, House Finch, Know Your Song. House Finch's song is so sunny and sweet that in the 1940s, a, spe a speculator tried to sell this small bird when she called the Hollywood Finch, a reference to the Finch's West Coast roots, as a pet. The ploy was a flop, perhaps because House Finch can't compete with Parrot for beauty and cage appeal. Unable to steal his stash of songbirds, the speculator released House Finch and friends on Long Island. And from there, they quickly spread to bird feeders across the United States. If you, like Finch, have ever been deemed not enough, remember this is exactly how House Finch escaped his gilded cage. Despite being judged as not enough, Finch still sings like a star. You too have a strength, a song. Do you know what it is? If card number one is resonating with you, I feel like this is pointing you to recognize the strengths that you have and to not pay any mind to people who are telling you that you're not enough. So House Finch has their beautiful song, they were tried to, uh, they, it was tried to be <laughs> uh, captured is the word that's coming up, but not necessarily captured. So someone heard House Finch's song, tried to sell them as a pet. Hey, listen to the beautiful song that it has. And then people would say, uh, no, it's not pretty enough. I don't want that as a pet. But did House Finch stop singing? No, because that is their beautiful, magical talent. And could you imagine how much less exciting and happy the world would be if House Finch stopped singing just because someone didn't think that it was beautiful enough? So if there's a situation in your life where someone is giving you reasons, and this could even be yourself, this can be in your own head, but focusing, Virgo details, focusing on the, the few things about yourself that may be considered not good enough, or you may think that you're not good enough in certain areas, forget that. It doesn't matter because there's something else in you that sings so strongly. Keep singing your song. Know your song. Allison just arrived on time. Beautiful Allison. Let's see. Helen, it's on the middle left. Well, there's no one holding a cabbage. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys, if card number two has resonated with you, just like Nicola and Alyssa, Allison and Opal, maybe this is your card. Your guides would like you to work with the energy of the orca and dive below the surface, dive under the surface. When you look at the ocean or the surface of a lake, the first thing you see is a reflection of the sky. The water's surface is a mirror, hiding the depths. When you dive deep, you discover there are worlds within worlds below that mirrored surface. Underwater is its own magical kingdom, a world with love and song family. In the language of the 
Lumi Nation of the Pacific Northwest. The word for orca translates as the people beneath the sea. Orca holds up a mirror, showing us another possible world, one with different ways of communicating and creating family. Orca asks, what is possible when you dive under the surface? Are there other ways to live and be? Can you create an alternate world for yourself? This card is pointing to a situation in your life that there is more to discover, but I feel like you're afraid to dive beneath the surface. Either you're afraid or you've been in the situation for so long that you think you know all the ins and outs of it, but there's way more underneath. Know that when you just look at the surface, all you're seeing is a projection. All you're seeing is a reflection of your own inner world. But when you take the time to dive deep, there's a lot more in there to recognize. As I was reading that, um, where is it? You discover worlds within worlds. Um, it made me think of a horse with no name, the ocean as a desert with its life underground. There's so much more when you get comfortable to dive deep. And diving down into something can be extremely terrifying. You don't know if you're going to be able to make it back up to get water or to get air. <laughs> you feel the need to protect yourself in order to dive deep. However, you're always protected. The universe always gives you what you need. Diving down into something is the only way to uncover all the hidden messages that are there to lead you on your highest path. Time to cloud interpretation, Jackie. Do you see something in the clouds here too, Ellen? <laughs> Opal, good morning. Good morning. Allison, yep, definitely this card for me today. What are you going to be diving down into? That card also to me is screaming shadow work. If there's anything in your world that is bothering you, a person, a situation, anything. Uh, it's bothering you because it's triggering something within yourself that you haven't processed yet. So the only way to fix your external world is to dive deep into your internal world and figure out what is hanging out in there because that is what's happening. That is what is causing all of these unwanted feelings that seem to be coming from the outside world. Allison, yes, shadow work, exactly. Helen, that's funny that you brought up that song. I saw a cartoon with a guy riding a horse and singing that song while the horse said, my name is Jim. It's so funny. Well, it was the summer of 2016. I couldn't get myself to listen to any music that was made outside of the 60s and 70s. Um, like, it felt foreign to listen to anything outside of that time period. And that song was, like, the the song of that summer. A Horse With No Name. Yep. Is it America? It's America that does that, right? Very interesting. Opal loves that song. It is a great song. If you don't know it, I highly recommend looking it up. It is America. Thank you, Opal. All right, guys, if card number three has resonated with you today, your guides would love for you to work with the energy of the black bear, and they're calling you to sync with the cycles. On a half moon night, watching black bear stretch up on her hind legs to climb your fence, you might think for a moment that you have a very human burglar about to break in. Like us humans, Black Bear can stand tall, a conduit between earth and sky. Because of this, she is seen as our mirror self, our wild sister tapped into healing wisdom and lush instinct. Black Bear connects deeply with the part of your psyche that longs to burrow under the blankets for the entirety of winter and emerge blinking into the light with new projects clinging to your skirt like cubs. Don't fight the cycles and seasons. Black Bear teaches 
to call on her to rediscover your rhythm and remember your wild. How fitting that this card is coming up as we're entering the mutable phase of summer. So I feel like Black Bear, especially right now, is calling to you to pay attention to an ending. Pay attention to something that it's time to wrap it up. Um, it, there might be some lingering feelings. There might be some lingering um, earth values, you know, like there might be some loose ends that you need to tie up. There might be... Um, like possessions that someone has of yours and this is time to just just go get it just cut it off the cycle is coming to an end and in order for your new beginning to come you need to tie this off right now another interesting card as we're asking the cards how to best utilize this virgo energy opal loves this card and you're going to dig out your record after this live. Oh, that's awesome. Rona is resonating with you too. Helen, oh my god, Black Bear. I saw a Black Bear years ago coming out of the forest looking around. I was sleeping in a van <laughs> waiting to get into a music festival. Helen, did you just know that you were supposed to sync with the cycles when you saw that Black Bear? <laughs> Love it. Know your song. If card number one resonated with you, know your song. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not enough. Don't let yourself tell yourself that you're not enough. There are parts of every one of us that are beautiful and necessary in this world. Even if it's not being recognized by others, there is something extremely necessary that you have to bring into this universe in order for the universe to thrive to its highest potential. So if there's the whatever the first thing that comes to mind as I was explaining that, like that is the gift that your guides are screaming for you to bring into this world. So don't shy away. Know that you have something that nobody else on this world has. Sometimes you might need to dive deep in order to find that, right? If nothing is coming to mind about what your special song is, do some shadow work. There might be some layers that you need to uncover before you can find what it is that you are here to do. Interesting that I just said layers. I have my Mika with me today, and I haven't had this crystal with me for a while, but Mika is all about um, uncovering layers like an onion. Very interesting. And syncing with the cycles, you know, maybe this is the time to let go of some negative thought pattern about yourself. Maybe that's the loose end that you're here to tie up. Thinking that, oh, whatever I have is not good enough, right? Sure, I have this gift that I should be sharing with the universe, but it's not good enough. So Black Bear is here to tell you, no, it's time to wrap that up. That's not the, the thought process that will serve your highest good. I heard the other day on, I don't remember what podcast I was listening to, but if you're ever looking for your purpose, if you don't know what your purpose on this universe is, we all have the same purpose. It is to love and to be loved. It's as simple as that. The rest of the details are just whatever happens to come most naturally, but everybody's purpose is to love and to be loved. Opal, they all resonate with me. I love it. This seems to be a very fluid reading as well. One through three. Andrea, I've seen many in my backyard over the years. Oh, that's so cool. Helen, perfect interpretation, Jackie. Fits in with me getting ready to completely change my location, career, and etc. right now. Yeah, absolutely, Helen. And you knew that card three was for you. You knew it right away. Helen, yes to singing our very own song. Make your own kind of music. Sing your own special song. Yeah. Oh, I can't name that singer, Helen. I'm sorry. But what you are what you just said there, Helen. Um, so long story short, I just started a TikTok for my business. I'm resistant to it because I feel like I'm too old to be on TikTok. However, I'm like looking through to see what other spiritual people are doing. 
And the videos that are catching my eye most are the ones that are not copying the other videos. There's people who will go on TikTok and make, you know, like all these like viral trends and it just looks like the same old boring stuff. But the people who are using their unique authenticity to create content, that's, that's what's serving the collective. That's bringing your own light into this world and not giving a shit. Who cares? Like who, who thinks well of you and who doesn't? Just be yourself. Be authentic. Allison, any recommendations on resources for beginning shadow work? So my two favorite ways to do shadow work, Allison, are either journaling. So, I mean, just an internet search, shadow work journal prompts to see what's out there. Um, if you're not much of a journaler, you can type in shadow work meditation into Insight Timer. And there are so many. Um, a lot of them, I mean, the shadow work slash inner child meditations are a little bit longer than some might be accustomed to. They're usually about 30 minutes. Um, and that's just to let yourself get into that deep meditative state to turn off your conscious mind and get in there and see what's in there. So you can start with um, one of those and see how that goes. Juliana, the thought process of not good enough got so old. Yeah, it's limiting. It doesn't even matter. Uh, Mama Cass. That makes me think of Austin Powers. All right, let's wrap this up, guys. You're welcome, Allison, with a card from our native spirit. Let's see how our native spirit would like to wrap up this reading to move forward into Virgo season, so feel free to send your energy into this deck. I hear those crickets in your environment, Helen. It's a, it's a YouTube track today, Helen. Embracing those summer nights, because we only have a month of summer left. Nicola, too, definitely resonated with me, as I've been watching a lot of Oracle videos and oceans. However, I am thinking about going back to uni to become a professional counselor working with children. Thanks. You're welcome, Nicola. I love it. Uh, if you guys have been enjoying today's session, you might choose to offer an energy exchange in the form of a donation if you're able. And if you'd like to stay connected with me, oh geez, you can follow me on Insight Timer. Uh, you can join the group that I have on Insight Timer called Our Spiritual Community. You can follow me on YouTube. Um, I just changed my channel to my name, so search Jackie Mancuso on YouTube. Uh, you can follow my TikTok. It's lakeside underscore living. What else? Oh, and if you'd like to work one-on-one -on -one with me for readings or for personal healing where I tap into your own energy field, you can find my, uh, my personal website on my Insight Timer bio. Helen, they rub their legs together to make that sound, don't they? Yes, they do. And Helen is supporting Nicola. Children need good supportive counselors. They do. There's a lot of confusion in childhood. I know Helen's going to love this card. Our culminating card today, guys, is White Buffalo. Abundance and security are flowing into your life. All things are possible. Balance and harmony prevail. You may be called upon to stand up for others, but you can do this because you have the support of many beings in the spirit realm. In Native American traditions, there are prophecies about the coming of the white buffalo, especially among the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota. There's a legend that white buffalo calf woman, a mystical being, came to the people a very long time ago, when they were out of balance. 
She gifted the people with a sacred bundle containing the white buffalo calf pipe to help restore the balance. Upon leaving, the white buffalo calf woman prophesied that she will return at the end of an age and that she will appear as a white buffalo calf. In recent times, white buffalo calves have been born, leading many to believe that this is the beginning of a new time. When this card chooses you, it's an honor, for it speaks of a time of miracles and balance in all things. You are a channel for the greater forces in the universe. With their help, all is possible. But without it, things can be a struggle. Surrender to support from the Great Spirit. You do not have to do everything alone. New times are coming, guys. The old way of living, the old universe, the old world is wrapping up. And we are coming into a new earth. Oh, we lost your sound. Can you guys hear me now? Um, let me see. No sound. <laughs> let me... Are you able to hear me now? Let's see if that fixed it. Are you able to hear me? <laughs> Opal can hear me. <laughs> um. I'm back. Okay. I changed my sound. I'm sorry about that. I will I will reread that white buffalo card. It's a strong message. Let me see what um Helen said something about the white buffalo. Uh, Helen, I lived in Oklahoma in the middle of an amazing Native American spirit when the white buffalo calf was born. Yeah, that's so cool. I love that. Michelle, I sense deja vu. Don't know if it's true or not, but maybe I've seen this in my dream before. I love it. Kayla, isn't there a pro by along with this about the rainbow tribe? The prophecy along with this about the Rainbow Tribe. Not that I'm familiar with, but maybe other people here might know about the Rainbow Tribe. Card one and the collective card resonated with me for sure, Aisha. That's lovely. Did you pinch the mute button? No, I did not. You hear the crickets. Okay, back. Great. I didn't have to instantly learn sign language. <laughs> Lip reading. All right. Well, I'm back. Um, sorry about that. Let's read the white buffalo card again. <laughs> they just really wanted us to hear it twice. Abundance and security are flowing into your life. All things are possible. Balance and harmony prevail. You may be called upon to stand up for others but you can do this because you have the support of many beings in the spirit realm. In Native American traditions, there are prophecies about the coming of the white buffalo, especially among the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota. There's a legend that the white buffalo calf woman, a mystical being, came to the people a very long time ago when they were out of balance. She gifted the people with the sacred bundle containing the white buffalo calf pipe to help restore the balance. Upon leaving, the white buffalo calf woman prophesied that she will return at the end of an age and that she will appear as a white buffalo calf. In recent times, white buffalo calves have been born, leading many to believe that this is the beginning of a new time. 
When this card chooses you, it's an honor, for it speaks of a time of miracles and balance in all things. You are a channel for the greater forces in the universe. With their help, all is possible, but without it, things can be a struggle. Surrender to support from the Great Spirit. You do not have to do everything alone. Beautiful message. Balance, abundance, harmony is coming. Kayla, I heard that it's predicting that Native American souls will be born across all nations. Is that the Rainbow Tribe? I love that. It's the Rainbow Warriors prophecy. It refers to all humans. I love that you guys know more about this than I do. Please continue to share. Um, in lots of different studies, we're being signaled of a new time coming. Native Americans with the white buffalo, um, a thousand years of peace, age of Aquarius, a whole lot of newness is coming around this time here and now. We talk about Pluto quite often. We, I talk about Pluto quite often um, because Pluto is the destroyer and he is moving through the last few degrees of Capricorn. Um, and when signs move through the last few signs, it's kind of like wrapping up. So Pluto is destroying lots of Capricorn themes right now. Lots of structures, whether that be governmental, educational, financial, lots of structures right now are being crippled and brought down. And times can look very scary. However, the systems that we had in place in our world were not serving our highest good. They were not serving the collective. They were serving the elite, right? This new age of Aquarius white buffalo time that we are entering, it starts with a crumble because it's so bad that we need to start from step one. Very bottom. So while everything around us seems to look wonky and crazy, just hold strong in your own core and trust that everything is breaking down in order for us to break through. This card fits right in with the Age of Aquarius. It does. Nicole thought the same thing. Yes. Sherry, at the Sundance ceremony this year, they had a stuffed white buffalo herd on display. I wonder if that was a signal. Um, interesting. Again, I talk about all the crystals that I have. I felt very drawn to white crystals today. I have a whole bunch of white stuff around me. More. White buffalo. Uh, freshness, new beginnings. Purity, Virgo purity. Look at that. Wade, creation speaks to us in symbols we can understand, but we can learn from all. Very wise, Wade. Yeah. Our, um, our source, our angels, our guides, whatever you refer to them as, whatever higher power it is that you believe in, um, works at such a high vibration that communicating with us is not difficult, but it's just different. They need to lower their vibration in order to come and send us messages. So oftentimes, yes, they'll speak to us in symbols numbers, dreams, um, just things to get our attention. So pay attention to things that just hit you in a way where you're like, that's supposed to mean something. And just sit with it and see what comes up. Or things that keep repeating. If you keep seeing the same number on the clock all the time, if you keep seeing the same number on a license plate all the time, just sit with it. You can look it up on the internet, but there's like, everyone has their own interpretation of all of these symbols and whatnot. So uh, you can see if there's a theme or you can trust your own intuition because we all have wonderful intuitions. Privileged to be in this moment 
in time. Yeah, we are witnessing the greatest show on Earth right now. Nothing like this has ever happened in our universe. The Earth is moving through the photon belt, which happens every 12,000-ish years. Um, and we are being just drowned in light. 108 Violet. I love it. Don't mean to be distracted. I'm lighting uh, incense over here. Juliana, I so appreciate that it reads, we have support in the spirit realm. For so many of us who dare to use our voices and be our truest selves, that daring is accompanied by great loss, the loss of family, friends, religion, etc. So the support that we have of one another on this platform and in the spirit world is paramount at this time. Absolutely. Thank you for um, being vulnerable and sharing that, Juliana, because standing in your authentic self, singing your song, and not caring who agrees with you or who aligns with you, but just knowing that you have this light to shine into the world, it can be a detrimental time if we choose to focus on the loss, right? Again, with all this Pluto energy, sometimes Losing something is the best thing that could have happened for us. We'll go through a little period of, like, getting our feet back, right? Like when, when a baby giraffe is born and it can walk, but it's all over the place. That's what it's like losing friends, losing family, losing beliefs. It's not that everything is over. It's just completely different and we need to relearn it. But in the end, it is for our highest good. Oh, I see 108 meditators here. Is that what you're referencing, Violet? Helen, actually, when we meditate, we raise our vibration to connect with our guides and angels. Thank you for the reminder, Helen. Yes, I was referring to like day to day life when you're just driving around. Kaylee, you can also ask them for communication in ways that are clear that you can understand. Thanks for that reminder, too, Kayla. Yeah. I oftentimes will ask them for specific concrete signs within a time frame also. Uh, time and space does not exist in higher vibrations as it does here. So by asking within the next 24 hours, if, um, if taking this next step will serve my highest good, show me a green flower. If taking this next step does not serve my highest good, show me a red flower. That kind of stuff. Helen, yes, Juliana, we are specifically called to show our light and bring our words here at this time. So important. No accidents, and we find our tribe like those here on Insight Timer. So we have support and information. We are now gathering into our tribal communities. Thank you, Opal. Have a wonderful day. We will be um, transitioning into a grounding meditation and Reiki transmission in just a moment. <sighs> Thank you all for sharing all of your wisdom as well. Definitely just standing in your authentic self at this time is going to take us highest. <sighs> there are seem to be very um, differing opinions in this world right now. Lots of arguing, like two sides of a coin, for no purpose. All of us want the same outcome. We all want to be loved. We all want to love. We all want there to be harmony and equality and peace on this earth. The way that certain groups are led to go about obtaining those things might be different. Bringing it back to astrology, all of the signs that are opposite of each other, they want the same thing. Let me think about this. So Taurus and Scorpio, they want the same thing. They both want security. Taurus goes about it in a more grounded way. Scorpio goes about it in a very passionate and outward expressive way. However, they're looking for the same thing. So just try not to get too caught up in pinning two groups of people against each other. Because you are me and I am you. We are all the same. Even though 
we have different approaches to life. All humans are just looking for good. There are evil humans out there, but when it comes to the core of humans, we are all love and we are all looking for love. So you can choose to become distracted by the sides of a coin that we are placed onto, or we can choose to see all humans as humans and choose to love and be loved. Helen, enjoy your new family. Thank you to everyone here today for bringing all your wonderful energy and ideas for us to change. Jen just found this tribe. Oh, welcome, Jen. Thanks for being here. Let's meditate. Let's uh, get into a comfortable position. I will talk you through a grounding meditation and then I will transmit some Reiki energy for you. Yes, Helen, even the evil are looking for love. They just don't know how. Yeah, they appear to be a bit lost on their path. The, the devil has to present stuff in a way that looks appealing. If the devil presented evil as evil, no one would go for it. So settling in, either seated or lying down. And on your next out breath, allowing your eyes to float closed. Feeling into all of the contact points your body has with the surface beneath you. And feeling the weight of your body being effortlessly supported by Mother Earth. And bringing all of your awareness now directly above the crown of your head in an egg-shaped white orb of light. And just for a moment, separating your awareness from your physical body. And viewing life from your eagle's perch. And now acting as the curious observer, as this egg of awareness cracks on the crown of your head, flowing your awareness down the back of your head, over your temples and ears, your forehead, eyebrows and eyelids, dripping off your nose, running down your cheeks, running off the lips, your chin, and down your jaw, flowing down all sides of your neck, and coming out into your shoulders. Flowing your awareness down your upper arms, Passing over the elbows, coming down to the forearms. And passing over the wrists, your hands, and fingers. And bringing all of your awareness up to your chest. Slowly flowing down the front side of your body, tuning into the beating of your heart. Noticing how the ribs expand and contract with the breath.
flowing further down, coming into your belly. Feeling into the organs resting behind your abdomen. And noticing how the breath causes the belly to rise and fall. Flowing further down, coming into your pelvic floor. And bringing your awareness to your upper back. Slowly flowing down the back side of your body. Passing over the shoulder blades weaving in and out the backs of the ribs, flowing down into the mid-back, the lower back. All the way down to your glutes. Flowing your awareness down the upper legs. Passing over the knees, down to the lower legs. Passing over the ankles, coming out to the tops of your feet. Feeling into the toes. and the soles of your feet. Breathing deeply as you feel into your entire body. Spreading your awareness throughout every cell in your body at once. And now using the breath to open the central channel of energy by breathing the air in through the nose and watching it as it travels down along your spine all the way to the root chakra at the base of your spine. And as you exhale, watch the breath reach up your spine to the crown of your head. Inhaling down to the root and exhaling up to the crown. Continue for a few rounds in silence. And releasing the breath back to your natural rhythm. As you begin to imagine roots growing down from every contact point you have with the surface beneath you. Watching as these roots travel down into Mother Earth. Pushing through the soil. Digging deeper and digging wider. Firmly grounding yourself into Mother Earth.
and welcoming in your guides and angels for any assistance they may have to offer now. allowing permission for the Reiki energy to be received by intending to completely surrender to this Reiki energy as it nourishes your highest good. Bringing your focus now back inside of your body, allowing your thoughts to flutter away as you receive this precious gift of time for yourself. Allow yourself to be fully present within your body, noticing anything that may rise to the surface as I keep track of the time. Returning your focus to your breath. Feeling into the weight of your body resting in space. Imagine a brilliant glowing ball of sparkling crystal clear light in the center of your chest. This warm ball of light surrounds your entire heart. On each inhale, this light becomes brighter and more vibrant. And on the exhale, the ball begins to grow in every direction throughout your body. 
Inhaling as the light shines brighter. And exhaling as the ball grows larger and larger until it encompasses your entire body. The crystal clear light slowly fades away as the connection to this Reiki energy transmission closes, allowing you to return home to yourself. I'm taking the time now to send gratitude to your guides and angels and listening in to receive any last messages. And slowly beginning to bring some movement back to your body, wiggling the fingers and toes, rolling out the wrists and ankles, perhaps moving your head from side to side and stretching out the body, however it is calling you to. Perhaps bringing the palms of your hands together Rubbing your hands back and forth, creating friction, creating heat. And cupping the warm palms over your eyes, blinking the eyes open, allowing the light to peek in through the cracks as you bring yourself back to your physical body. Thank you so much for joining me today. Love to all. Namaste. Thank you, Jody. Blessings on your journey today, all. Thank you, thank you. I hope that crystal clear light was as clearing for you as it was for me. It was a beautiful transmission today. I don't know if you guys felt it, but I felt it. I love the blue and the butterflies. Nicole, thank you. If you have enjoyed today's session, if you're able to offer a donation, they are always appreciated. If you're not following me just yet on Insight Timer, please consider following my future profile page. That is where you will also find a link to join my group on Insight Timer called Our Spiritual Community. I will be putting an update of today's oracle reading in Our Spiritual Community. Um, and my personal website is also available on my teacher profile on Insight Timer as well, if you'd like to work with me privately for personal readings or for personal healing sessions. Jen, namaste. Be well. Thank you, Jen. Maggie, thank you so much. That was so, so good. I'm glad, Maggie. I'm glad that it was received well today. Thank you for your donation. Very much appreciated. Nicole, oh, I felt it today. Lovely. I wonder if our, our guides would just like us to start this Virgo season with, some, with a fresh slate, right? A clean slate. Um, I also have a course on Insight Timer titled Astrology 101, if you are curious about astrology and what the planets represent and what the signs represent and how to read your own birth chart and whatnot, so you can find that. Um, and I am planning a women's retreat 
for the end of March 2023. This is, I think I'm going to call it Aquarian Adventures. I think that's what name has landed. Um, Pluto will be moving into Aquarius in mid-March, or maybe, I think it's March 23rd. Pluto moves into Aquarius next year. And Aquarius is the sign of the humanitarian, um, just bringing the collective together, very community focused. And I was presented with an idea for a retreat where it is not the responsibility of the leader to find all of these shamans and mystics and people to bring together. Um, if you are attending the retreat, you're just asked to bring some sort of gift to share with the collective. So that allows me to keep the cost of the retreat down, um, and that allows us to share our personal light with everyone around us. So more details to come, but it will be, I think, March 30th. It'll be a Thursday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Leave on Sunday. I'm thinking Southern Kentucky. Um, I've been looking for some Airbnbs, and I think I found the one. I just need to book it and then start marketing. So just so that you know, you're all invited. Uh, I think that one can hold up to 12 people, so it'll be, you know, nothing too big. But yeah, keep, keep your feelers out if you're interested in that. I'll give you more details as they are presented to me by the universe. Christine, happy birthday month, Helen, and to all the Virgos. Namaste, Jackie. Thank you, Christine. Yes, happy birthday to Helen and all the other Virgos. I didn't think that Virgos had the energy of a Leo who wanted to celebrate for the whole month, but to each their own. I'm just teasing you. Uh, so let's recap this reading because I had a very beautiful, concise message during that Reiki transmission. At this time, especially during Virgo season, we are being asked to sing our own beautiful song. So focus on the most beautiful part of yourself, even if others or yourself pick out other small details about yourself that are quote unquote not good enough, even though that's not true. But know your song. Find the part of yourself that benefits yourself as much as it benefits others and just sing it to share it with the world if you are not sure what that part of yourself is or if there are limiting beliefs in your mind that are holding you back dive under the surface go deep into yourself do some shadow work uncover some layers of soot that may be sitting on top of those gifts that are hiding them right now and know that Everything is cyclical. It's time to shed some of our limiting beliefs in order to step into the age of Aquarius, the time of the white buffalo, the time of peace and harmony and balance. The more inner work and personal work that we do, the quicker and easier the world will transform into this new high vibrational earth. We all have an important role to play. So with that, I will leave you. I will see you on Wednesday at the same time as today, 8.15 Central Time. And that's, that's a wrap. That's all I have to say about that. So I hope that you enjoyed today. I hope that the Reiki served you well. I hope that these animal spirits clued you in how to best utilize the Virgo energy for the next month. The light in me truly honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you for being here. And I will see you very soon. Take care.